Welcome to Business Talk Sister Gok. I'm Becca. And I'm Ruthie. And today we're going to be starting a four-part series, specifically talking about things that you can use to start a business from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Some people would call this a startup. (laughs) So today, specifically, we're going to be focusing on business development tools, resources, and education. Mm -hmm. And we actually have the links to the things that we're going to be talking about within um, the tools and tips page of our website. But we know that a lot of times when you are working out or you're on the go in the car, you're not going to be able to grab this and you just want to listen to what the tools are. So we're going to talk about them uh, in our four part series. And then if you ever need to access them, you can do that within our website. website tools and tips page Mm -hmm. and we're always adding more to this so we're really excited um about getting those tools as we talk with more entrepreneurs and they give us more really cool things to add things that have benefited them as they started up their businesses yeah so today uh the first part we're going to do is business development and startup resources um if you've ever thought hey i really think that this could be a profitable business where should you go for that and that's a little bit what we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. Where do you even start? So, Becca, tell us about the Small Business Administration and what it can do for you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So, if you haven't heard of the Small Business Administration, it also is SBA, uh, is the department that works with small businesses in the government. They get paid Mm -hmm. to do this job. And they work in, this is actually a federal government resource. So, there's lots of local ones as well within different economic development authorities and stuff like that um but the small business administration is on the the federal level for the entire united states um they have a person a representative within different regions of the united states within your local community it might be between like a couple counties area or maybe just specifically your one county or even your one town if you live in a big metropolitan area so these people are paid to specifically talk to you about business ideas profitability they have tons of spreadsheets and they um do this for a living they're basically like a free business consultant so are these kind of these people are they like dream killers or are they actually like paid to watch you succeed (laughs) great question so the small business administration obviously it's going to depend on the person who you're you're working with and what they're talking about um i think that one of the things you need to be aware of is that they see a lot of people who come through and just are visionaries they are really excited about oh i have this idea for profitability and i mean you have Ruthie had an excellent idea to make uh, jewelry out of chicken nugget bracelets. Okay, so <laughs> like genius. we're talking instead of candy bracelets made out of chicken nuggets. Yeah, and you can put it. I made a prototype. It was awesome, and you know, very stylish in like the Fred I, I Flintstone say. style. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely like something maybe Wilma would have worn. Probably, I Some wouldn't. Some really doubt it. big rock pearls out mm-hmm. of chicken nuggets mm-hmm. yeah um so anyways stuff like that uh ruthie actually once did pitch that to a business counselor it um, was kind of joking but also like dead on serious and i really wanted to pursue it but then when she was like talking about all the food processing things i realized that that is not my gifting so <laughs> <laughs> ruthie does not like food inspection regulations <laughs> so um because you know those candy bracelets mm-hmm. you know like she wanted to basically make it like candy bracelet necklace out oh, yeah. of chicken nuggets they know yeah it's, it's obvious what i was going for yeah <laughs> but as soon as the lady said like you're really gonna have to have s- clear instructions about do not cook these in the oven and then directly place them around your neck <laughs> <laughs> um that is when we realized yeah this is there are a lot of stupid people in the world <laughs> and i don't want to deal with that the liability on that is a little high if mm-hmm. you don't have clear packaging so it's definitely still a profitable business. Um, I mean, she was very gracious with us <laughs> and said... So, yeah, so that was the point, that she was very gracious and she wasn't exactly like, no, this is a stupid idea, but she walked me through what that would look like. Like, so I was like, wow, this would be really fun. And then she just kind of was like, okay, here's the things that wouldn't be fun or here's the reality of what you are trying to do. Like, you could do it, but it would take a lot of work. And she n- knows enough about business and production and things like that that she was able to give me exactly what would need to be done to be able to get that off the ground. Yeah, and when we're thinking about the 
the minute number of people within one region that are really going to buy that product, you're really going to have to go digital sales. Mm -hmm. And that is so many more hoops to jump through for specifically food packaging. Not so. saying that it can't be done. It was just not what I wanted to do long term. So if that is something that you're interested in, it's on the table. And I would love to see chicken nugget bracelets on the market someday. I'm pretty sure she would buy those. I would. Them. I would buy them in bulk and I would give them <laughs> to all of my friends. <laughs> So, like, if you do do that, don't don't tell her because she's going to give it to I'll me go for broke. Christmas. <laughs> Just kidding. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometime we should tell them about our horrible Christmas present tradition. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the first resource we have on here, Small Business Administration. Setting up a meeting with them is absolutely free. Do it. They are really good at helping you break down the realities of what it's going to take for your vision to become a reality. Uh, and I really like them for that. The next place that I have on here as an, a recommendation to check out is university extension offices. So most uh, states have a state university and within that universities pride themselves in being the most advanced education system. How do they do that? Through research, right? Mm -hmm. So they always love when they're like, we invented the vaccine for whatever, right? Or all that kind of stuff. They're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. So those people are excellent people to talk to when you're specifically looking at an industry that you want to get into that maybe specifically involves farming like agriculture in general um there's manufacturing they have tons of resources on that tons of connections across different uh states even so these are really good people to work with especially when you're thinking about hey this is a product i want to be processing um locally what's the uh consumption of that and how can i tap into that and they have a lot of access to free software that probably wouldn't run on your computer uh, because it's way more data rich and we have like i mean it wouldn't run on mine so um a lot of a lot of different processing needs ram power to get that done um so they have a lot of resources that they're already using they love that kind of stuff um so it's great great to connect with them and sometimes they even want to do real world application of a theory they've been testing and if your business is already up and running and you want to test out something they've been working on and be a part of a research study they love that too they and sometimes are just, you can be compensated for being a part of their research studies. Yeah, sometimes it's only like five bucks for filling out a survey, but it's better than nothing, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. Yeah, so the next thing uh, we wanted to talk about is uh, we really like Dave Ramsey, mm -hmm. especially if you're thinking, hey, I'm going to start a business, but I need to make sure that I am financially stable enough to do that. Yeah. Uh, what we like about Dave Ramsey is that we both tried his stuff out, especially for like the debt payoff. He's really big on that. Um, the debt snowball process and his seven baby steps and things like that were all, uh, I think that where I got really hooked on it was watching Becca and her husband, Joel, kind of walk through the process of um, their debt snowball journey and just seeing them actually applying the principles of Dave Ramsey and um, just what's cool about that is that his principles are rooted in the Bible and biblical principles, um, which is really cool. Just watching them um, just kind of run with that. And um, another thing that's cool about him is that he is just very vocal about sharing the gospel. And that's something that I think is really important. But um, yeah, anyway, so he is, if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. He has, he has like the number four podcast in the world. Yep. So. And Another good podcast to listen to. <laughs> a program called Financial Peace University, um, which is if your church is uh, leading that, then you should definitely get involved and try to look for one in your area. So in general, I think the biggest thing, the takeaway that I like about um, that concept about meeting your financial goals is that you're going to be able to do a whole lot more when you have limited amount of risk, meaning if you don't have any debt, it's not a huge risk to try something new. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I like. I like low risk opportunities. Uh, so along with that uh, person who is actually supported by him as well as Christy Wright, we have her on the website as well. She specifically is geared toward female entrepreneurs. Um, she has a book called Business Boutique and you probably could find it at the library for free. So you should check that out and see if you can. Uh, 
I have a couple friends that have been looking at her stuff and reading her books and what they really like about it is that it really boosts your confidence and tackles some like difficult issues in a practical way of okay how do I uh, price myself how do I ask for money should I be giving away my services for free Mm -hmm. and she really nails those things and hits a whole bunch of myths about how you should start your business because there's going to be a ton of people out there that are like hey we're going to give you free branding if you do this for free for us and that can actually end up being a really poor decision in the long run um, because you're not value valuing your product or your service the way it should be and then um getting really high maintenance clients so there's a lot of stuff within what she does uh, i would definitely recommend giving her a listen she also has a podcast Which is also called Business Boutique. Yeah, Mm -hmm. she's pretty cool. She does like conferences too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely think that if you showed up at one of her conferences, you'd feel like definitely younger than her age demographic. But that's okay if you want to do that. (laughs) I mean, I probably would. So, okay. The final thing in the resources for business startups that I really think is a great opportunity for you to check out is Facebook business groups. So Mm -hmm. Facebook has been really, really pushing their groups, communities, right? Um, Getting into these smaller groups of of community because I don't know if you guys have been looking at the news at all, but they've been totally getting slammed for all of these like hate things or whatever that people are posting and negative ads or political things. And so they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We are turning into a content. We're not just like a content like platform we're now becoming curators and that's actually moving them away from the legal status of being a um basically just a place for people to post their thoughts and so they're like oh we're gonna get nailed by the government so basically they're trying to transform how they're doing things into pushing groups that have group moderators uh very similar to reddit if you guys have ever used reddit um definitely a little bit more techy not as visually appealing or user-friendly but um a really good place to find snarky fun content sometimes other times it's like somebody's totally roasting you so um within that facebook is thinking well there's way less liability in reddit's model so let's push facebook groups within that there are business groups that you can ask to be a part of. Now, what's really nice about those entrepreneurial groups is that they have a code of conduct for what you're allowed to post and not allowed to post. And uh, you have to agree to be by those standards, maybe even prove that you have a business right now or you're looking to start one. And then you get invited to that group, right? Or accepted once you request Mm -hmm. to join. And that's a really good place to start uh, getting some small data on different demographics so if you're doing um different things like oh i really want to know if this book cover that i've been working on is gonna do well versus this one or should i be reaching this group of people or this group of people putting those questions to the group is really fun because there's a ton of people in there that'll be like oh yeah i totally buy that Mm -hmm. um i just recently saw someone post about hey would you guys be, would there be people out there that would buy subscription service to place settings? Like if I put all of the plates together and mailed them to you, would you be like happy with those? And a ton of caterers would chime in and say, absolutely. That's like such a storage issue for me. And I'm always doing different events that have different color combinations. And if I could just do a subscription, get all the stuff, clean it and send it back, it would be so much easier for me. So definitely a really good place to get um, quick consumer feedback Mm -hmm. from other business owners. And then to sometimes when I'm thinking about something that i'm seeing in data and i'll say hey guys uh i've been looking at this do you see this happening in the marketplace and it's a really good place to pull a ton of people really quickly about what they're seeing within the environment of economics or whatever else and and just affirm whether or not you should pursue a certain direction um the downside of these groups is that sometimes people post stuff about multi-level marketing and they try to convince you to become a representative. Part of their pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so watch out for that. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing to watch out for is lots of different people that are like boasting get-rich-quick schemes that mm-hmm. clearly look sketchy. Um, and then 
also to if it sounds too good to be true it probably is so stay away from it yeah and let me tell you it's a rabbit hole of a journey to try to figure out what they're actually talking about Mm -hmm. um the other thing that (laughs) i see so often in these groups and and maybe you need to be this person like i'm not saying you shouldn't be i'm just saying that i find it a little bit emotional sometimes is when people post in there and they're like oh my goodness like this is the worst thing that ever happened to me and blah 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 and then like two thousand people comment like oh i so feel you like you need to dump that guy or whatever (laughs) and so um that happens sometimes Sometimes you just need to be validated i guess (laughs) yeah and that usually happens within like the women's entrepreneur groups (laughs) but i think it's kind of funny anyways so definitely an entertaining place to learn stuff get a good feel for like different demographics of people and that kind of stuff i i find that worth the time investment to look through because there's so many different types of facebook business groups that you can just look and you'll probably find one that's in your niche market honestly because there's just so many of them yeah so uh the other thing we're going to be talking about to utilize as you are a younger person thinking hey i really want to try different things there is this amazing new tool on linkedin called linkedin mentors and you actually can sign up for it and it'll say what are you interested in learning about or whatever and you can fill out all these categories and then they just like send you algorithm matches of people that they think you should connect with Mm -hmm. And I have totally done this multiple times and it's actually been a really valuable experience for me because first of all, half the people that agreed to be a a LinkedIn mentor forgot that they did it. (laughs) So it's like a really awkward conversation. Like, thanks so much for agreeing to meet with me. And they're like, "Uh, I did, who are you? But then you just like explain, yeah, you know, we were matched together based on the mentorship algorithm within LinkedIn. Um, this is what I'm looking to learn. Would you be interested in having a phone call with me? And it's been such a fun time to literally talk to people from across the United States and just connect with them and say, hey, what are you doing here? Um, this is what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think of that? Or even I've had other marketers that'll say, okay, I looked at your website. This is what I would recommend. Or I'm looking at what you're doing and I think you're doing really good here. Keep trying here. Or just validating even some of the stuff that I've been working on. Um, That has been so beneficial. So definitely check that out. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should set one of those up. Mm -hmm. And always save your password because... From experience, if you don't, you actually have to send in a picture of your driver's license um, to get it validated again that, yes, you are legitimately this person. Um, So they take like your security seriously, which I appreciate because that's a really professional platform. And if someone hacked that, it'd be pretty awkward. So definitely save that. Um, Yeah. So we're getting to the end of today. We just covered that. Next time we're going to be covering free education options. So uh, we want to talk with you about that next week. So tune in for that. And now we're going to tell you um, about some questions in life that we have regretted asking. (laughs) This is our gawk portion of our episode. So um, the first one that I distinctly remember in life regretting asking, especially in a group setting, um, was like someone said something about, oh, I'm allergic to garlic powder. And I don't know what came over me. But I legitimately asked, what happens to you when you (laughs) eat what you're allergic to? (laughs) Terrible, terrible question. (laughs) Which at, uh, you know, at at first glance, it doesn't sound horrible because I have always wanted to see someone swell up like the guy in Meet the Robinsons when he gets in contact with peanut butter. So I think that that's a perfectly legitimate question to ask. Like, do you swell up? But she said, what happens to you? Yeah, let's just and say it was a very descriptive internal process that sounded excruciatingly painful. And it was yeah let's just say it was a little bit of potty talk so i was i was like oh my goodness question that went south real fast (laughs) yeah and i was like this is probably like really uncomfortable for a lot of people (laughs) that was awkward um another another question what have you what have you regretted asking um one thing that i have regretted asking is actually the question that i didn't regret asking (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) we were doing (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, well, I just thought it was actually kind of hilarious. So anyway, uh, when I was probably like 14 years old, we took a tour of the state capitol. And um, I there was the tour guide that we had had literally like perfect eyebrows. And the whole time, I just kept staring at his eyebrows. And I was like, he has got to wax his eyebrows there is no way that he could just wake up every morning and have such perfect eyebrows so when we were <laughs> done sorry. he was late and was literally running away to his next appointment and i yelled down the hallway do you wax your eyebrows and he turned around while he was running backwards like jogging backwards and looked at me very perplexed and said no i do not and kept running away and that's actually a question I don't regret asking, but it was a little awkward for the people around me. <laughs> Memorable screaming that in, was it the state capitol or was that was Washington? It, oh, Washington, D.C. No, it was the state capitol oh, okay. in Minnesota, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's definitely nothing, something you hear every day in the yeah. capitol. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right, well, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we uh, will see you next week.